Hello, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to today's session. Uh, this is uh, Nelly Deutsch, and I hope you can hear me um, and that uh, you can see me as well. I know you can see me. So just let me know in the chat box if the audio is okay, if it's not too loud and it's not too quiet. Um, I know I've had some problems, so uh, just give me a, a thumbs up if you can hear me or a yes. So I'll write this down in case you can't. Can you hear me? Okay. All right. So uh, as people are coming in, if you could write uh, where you're from and anything else you'd like to add in the chat box. I want to remind you that the chat box is our way of communicating and it's really, really important for the uh, learning experience and this is what it's about. It's not about content, but it's about what you experience in the live online class. And the chat box is part of it. So good to see um, some new names, new people, and uh, some older ones. So if this is your first time on WizIQ, uh, you can also add that. Feel free, as I said, to use the chat box uh, in any way you wish. All right, so my name is Nellie Deutsch. For those of you who don't know me, I've been teaching through WizIQ, well, since 2007 when I was a doctoral student, and it's been a wonderful experience. And one of the reasons is that it's not so much uh, what WizIQ can do, but what I can ask of WizIQ. So if you need support, there is now, thank you, Pam, uh, there is now a live support chat. If you take a look and uh, give me a yes or a thumbs up, if you go into the smiley, you'll find it there. If you can see the live support chat, it's at the bottom, uh, pretty close to the middle, just under the uh, PowerPoint presentation or the whiteboard. All right, so I see Jerry can see it. All right, Jerry, thank you for that wink. So where are you from? Okay, if you could just um, add a place. Hello, uh, Lisa, good to see you. We've got Stella, hello, from Argentina. And any other countries? India, very good. And Spain, wonderful. And the United States. Okay, now I'm recording this. It'll appear on YouTube and Vimeo, but it's going to be without the uh, the list of attendees and without the chat box. I also want to remind you that there's a copy chat. Okay, if you can give me a thumbs up if you can see or a thumbs down if you can't see. The copy chat, it's all on the right, and I'm going to give you a little pointer in a minute. So, okay, Jerry, very good, Stella. Excellent. So just before the end, uh, you'll get a chance to uh, copy the chat and then you can add it to your blog or uh, Word document, email, wherever you want so that you can go over it. Sometimes we add PowerPoint uh, presentation links, uh, class links, and other links, and other people as well. So I think that's important. I also want to give you a little pointer here. If you can see pop out, there are arrows. There's an arrow where the webcam is, where you see my face. There's an arrow just under that for the attendee list. And there's an arrow for the chat box. Just a little arrow, it's very, very tiny. If you want the chat box to be larger, what you need to do is pop the just click on the arrow and it pops to the middle and then you can pull it from the sides the way you would an image and then it becomes really large now i'm doing this so you can see this in the uh, youtube recording that i'm going to share with you 
in the course. And the course is Learn to Blend and Flip with Technology. All right. So there I've demonstrated that. You can also minimize it and then it goes to the bottom left. But if you want it to come back, you need to pop out or click on the pop in, sorry, click on the arrow and it goes back to its place. Okay, it's not complicated, but if you need help at any time, just say, help Nelly, I don't know what I did. And if you can't find the chat, uh, it's at the bottom left. Okay, so if you get lost for any reason. All right, so we're talking about a course called Learn to Blend and Flip with Technology. It's an annual course. It started uh, in the fall. It's going to renew in September, but we're going to continue with wikis in May and then Google Drive in June. And then you'll have a two month break, July and August, where we have other things planned. So, uh, all right, so what is a wiki? Oh, I also want to mention, I forgot to mention that you can get the PowerPoint presentation and let me share the link with you so you can follow and click on the images. Okay, so let me add that to the class and I'll make the font a little bit larger and I'll change the color. There we are. So there's the link to the PowerPoint presentation. I'm also going to remove my sometimes on and off I'm still here uh, in case the uh, broadband gets uh, a bit too much for the class all right so all these things are clickable more or less so you'll be able to do that in the PowerPoint presentation link that I just shared all right so a wiki a wiki was started by Ward Cunningham how many of you have heard of Ward Cunningham Give me a thumbs up if you've heard of him or a thumbs down if you haven't. Okay, well, very good, Jerry. I see you've, <laughs> you've been doing your homework. Excellent. Well, uh, Ward Cunningham came up with the idea of a wiki. It was called a WWW, which was Wiki Wiki Web. And you can still go there and create a wiki. Most of us know about wikis and our students, of course, through Wikipedia. Wikipedia was started by Jimmy Wales. At least he was the man who promoted it. He didn't really start it, but he was the man behind it. And today he owns most of the uh, stock and he's responsible. At least he's at the top. And it's based on Media Wiki. MediaWiki is open source, which means that if you have a website and you want to add something like that looks like Wikipedia, you can do it by downloading MediaWiki. Now the question is, what is a wiki? And if you can add that in the chat. That's okay, Helena. Good to see you. I'm glad you made it. You're not seeing my face because my connection is currently a bit slow. It's a collaborative editing tool. That sounds very, very good. Excellent. Like a collaborative blog. Okay, which means what? We'll talk about what collaboration means. Okay, and we'll talk about cooperation and how they're not the same. So a wiki comes from the word in Hawaii, which means quick. Quick means that you can add information very, very quickly. And the idea is to write the information together. And if you look at this image, and I'm going to uh, put a box around it because I think it's really, really important because this captures exactly what a wiki does. Okay. A wiki is exactly this. A few people writing together on one page. So imagine if you had a page okay, from a notebook, and uh, how many people can write on a single page from a notebook? Maybe two people. But can you have hundreds and maybe thousands of people writing on the same page? That would be a bit ridiculous. But on a wiki, because it's online, you can do it. 
you can get a lot of people writing at the same time. And we'll be doing it today at near the end. All right, so why? Why have people writing on a page together? What's the value? Okay, or the question, why wiki? Okay, feel free to add your response as I ask questions. Every response is correct because it's yours. Okay, it's whatever you think or, and it's all correct. All right, so why would anybody want to write on the same page? To edit, revise, write. But why so many people? Why not one person or two people? That's right. Very good, Stella. Information. That's right. We want to get a lot of information, uh, Jin Lee, to know. Right. I know something about wikis. You know something maybe completely different from what I know. So together, we can pool our knowledge and come up with something even bigger. And that's called collective intelligence. That means that we work together and that's exactly what happened with Wikipedia. Wikipedia became an encyclopedia, an online encyclopedia, because people from around the world with different expertise write and they edit each other and there is control. Okay, there are, uh, you know, there is a big brother on Wikipedia and they make sure that nonsense is not there and that the information is accurate. Okay, so it's checked. All right, so you got the idea. That's correct. All right, so wikis are for collaboration. But what is collaborative learning? And how is it different from cooperative learning? So what do we mean when we say collaboration? Okay, if you can add something there, just feel free to add as we go. So what does it mean? share information. Don't worry about typos. I make them all the time. It's part of uh, writing online. You're allowed to do it. It's working together. And how is it different from cooperative? Good question. <laughs> okay, thank you, Lisa. Right, that's, that's a question. Okay, that's a question that, uh, let's see. Okay, Daniela says, in cooperative, everyone takes responsibility. Excellent, very good. Allowing expressions, individual expressions, uh, Jin Li means, I guess. All right, so let's take a look and see. Okay, now I just want to let you know that on the PowerPoint presentation, I'm adding it again, if you click on the images from now on, you'll be able to get the link or the source. Okay, so let's take a look at this. If you click on this, on the PowerPoint presentation that I just shared, you'll be able to get the meanings. Okay, cooperative learning has collaboration in it, but it's not quite the same. Collaborative learning is a way for students to team up, just like cooperative learning is a way for students to team up. Everybody teams up, but the difference is that exactly as you said, D'Angelo, in cooperative learning, everybody does their part on their own. It's like a puzzle. They do one part of the puzzle and then they put it together. So it's everybody working, and I think Jin Lee was right too. You allow your own expression. So one number one, for example, if you take a web quest, I don't know if you're familiar with web quests, but if you take a web quest, everybody does something different. So one person may do one thing, another one something else, third person does something else, but together you get the whole. Okay, so it is exactly like a puzzle. Each person on the team is one part of the puzzle and together they make the whole. So that's cooperative learning. Collaborative learning means working together on the same thing. 
So you work together. So you can have a cooperative learning environment with collaboration, but generally that's not what's done. Okay, so collaborative learning means that we work together on the same thing. So if you're a teacher, and by the way, how many of you are teachers? Okay, if you could just, uh, teaching in a formal school or informal school. But you know, we're all teachers because we share information. All right, so as teachers, if you work in a formal institution, there are exams. And you can't do exams collaboratively because that would mean cheating. Thank you, Helena, for getting that information. That's cheating. Oh, you're retired, but you're still a teacher. Once a teacher, always a teacher, no matter what. So um, with uh, collaborative learning, it's considered cheating to do an exam together. But actually, it's a very good way of learning, okay? So collaborative is working together. Co cooperative is working for the same goal, but everybody does their part. So we're going to be talking about not cooperation. We're going to be talking about wikis for collaboration. Okay, and we know what collaboration is. But if you'd like to learn more about collaboration, if you click on these images in the PowerPoint present right there, you'll be able to get the link. Okay, from the University of Cornell, where they discuss collaborative learning, and from Edutopia, where they also discuss collaborative learning in a slightly different way. All right, so we're going to listen to a YouTube video that I think you're going to find very interesting about collaborative learning in the classroom. In other words, in a face-to-face -face classroom. So you'll just have to let me know when you hear it, okay? Here at the College Preparatory School in Oakland, California, collaborative learning is one of the most important ways our students learn and grow. In math, we work in groups every day, asking each other questions before we ask the teacher. In English, we lead our own roundtable discussion to deepen our understanding of the books we read. College Prep is one of the top private high schools in the country, and a terrific model for collaborative learning. The good news, their practices are both replicable and affordable. Take a look at what they do for their students. May change that you decide to do for yours. College Prep School is a 52 year old school that was founded by uh, two women who had a strong vision of a place where academics could really thrive, the collaborative teaching and learning that we do here. Here at the College Preparatory School in Oakland, California, collaborative learning is one of the most important ways our students learn and grow. In math, we work in groups every day, asking each other questions before we ask the teacher. In English, we lead our own roundtable discussions to deepen our understanding of the books we read. College Prep is one of the top private high schools in the country and a terrific model for collaborative learning. The good news, their practices are both replicable and affordable. Take a look at what they do for their students. It may change what you decide to do for yours. School is a 52-year-old school. It was founded by uh, two women who had a strong vision of a place where academics could really thrive. The collaborative teaching and learning that we do here is really distinctive. Individual work can be a great way to, to master content, but with the group work, 
empowers and kind of enables is a student's cultivation of a certain uh, resilience. How do you look to your neighbor as a resource? How do you test your own theories? How do you understand um, if you're on the right track or the wrong track? The sort of habits of mind that actually are the underpinnings of deeper scholarship. We have 45 minute classes and the math classes meet every day. The kids come in and they go over the homework in their groups by comparing answers. I got the square root of b squared plus a squared. Yep. And then if they're having no resolution, like a problem was too hard for everybody, that's the signal that says that we need to talk about a problem or two as a class. The thing I like most about the group work is how easy it is to get help if you're stuck on a problem. I mean, you can just ask one of your group mates to help you and everybody's really ready to lend a hand. It's, it's these two lines, and then we do the slope formula from zero to, to yeah, that. All right, here comes classwork 30. The ones I care most about are one and two, and then it says draw the segment from A, B to C, D. So just connect those points. We designed the classwork problems to be harder than the homework problems. The homework problems tend to be more straightforward and the classwork problems are much meatier. And so in order for them to actually accomplish them, they have to talk to each other. For harder problems, usually our group will work together and we can usually come to a solution just by putting like little pieces of it together. The best groups talk about the problems before they take pencil to paper. You, you really tell their faces are directed towards each other. They are, you know, looking at each other's papers and they're learning so much more. They're learning how to be proactive. They're learning how to depend on their peers. Today you will work as a team of surveyors putting to use your knowledge of basic compass and straight edge constructions. Your only tools will be a length of rope and a piece of chalk. I feel like when we work outside together, it just kind of brings our group together a little bit more. You needed someone to hold the rope and someone to move the chalk, and so it was just like the next step in collaboration was working together to make one big end result. What I do in my classroom is I try to make the kids as, feel as comfortable and as safe to be able to take the risks that will create a good conversation. On the first day of class with the ninth grade, I start by asking the students what are the values implicit in sitting around this large wooden oval table. And they come up with a list on their own. First and foremost is respect, and also listening to each other, being courteous, having the right uh, geography of the classroom. It's really important. I always make sure before we start class, can you all see each other? Can you make eye contact with your classmates? And if you can't, I have them adjust their chairs so that they can. I always tell the kids, check your ego at the door. Be willing to take risks and just have fun and just throw out ideas. And you throw something else out and it's not fully formed, that's great because somebody else can jump in and build on that idea. Another sort of easy trick I have is to start with a kind of a reflective moment, a moment of silence, or a little moment of writing. Remembering you want to have your feet firmly planted on the floor, and then the next thing you want to do is focus on the breath. How was that? You know, it only takes a couple minutes, but just having that um, moment to let out the anxiety is great because it really can improve their concentration for the class so that they're able to have that kind of engaged conversation. And if you guys need a little bit of extra... What's important is to have a set of guidelines for the students. In this conversation, um, we're gonna have, I'm going to have you guys write down the questions and then talk to each other about the conversation, about the book. And I'm going to sort of step back and take notes. And I'll do a little bit of guiding, but you guys are going to talk to each other. And there's three particular roles that students will fill. One is the scribe okay, role, I, where one student is taking notes I, on the conversation so that all the other students can be fully the, uh, PowerPoint in the conversation that's happening. So should be able to, um, another role is a little map, where one student you, is monitoring just, uh, who's speaking make, when, and they draw these sort of diagrams so that there's a visual map problems, let me know of how the conversation is going. So, um, the other thing I just want to point out, since I'm showing exactly, these to you, Elena, is, getting would you say this is a good conversation? And Elena, you mentioned yeah, about that, that it's hard to get your students <laughs> doing such right. things. 
Well, you and have then to the third realize rule is that the moderator in many role. cases, so I was the moderator, and it was my job to um, if the make sure that we didn't stay you. on one topic for if too long or move too quickly. It was also my job to make sure that everybody uh, talked. Okay, I think we should hear from someone who behind hasn't you. It's going to be very uh, difficult Taya, Caroline, for you Noah, Max, as an individual well, teacher in your school. Godlike. to get so your students just like taking a gamble to cooperate. When we're having a conversation, you really feel like you're part of the conversation you and not like, oh, you're sitting in the back of the class and can't actually see the person who's talking. Project and and then go on also, it's a great way for people to so, exchange hello, ideas Allison. back and forth and sort of have everyone uh, you're contribute. Asking Who do you think asks, is the modern equivalent uh, that's, to that's, that's such an important <laughs> question. Thank you for asking <laughs> that. I've been in addition to for setting up 30 years, and I've been asking the same question. Allison, what I do in my class is I get my students to sit in circles and then they ask, why do we have to do it in your class and we don't have to do it in other classes? And the reason they ask is because they have to put the chairs and desks back. So it's a lot of work. But once they see the value of sitting in a circle, they don't mind anymore. But I think that Elena and others who are finding it difficult. I think I know Helena uses this method because uh, it's easier in your school, Helena, but in some universities, colleges, and K-12, they don't let you change things around. And if there's another teacher after you, they complain. So um, we have to find ways, as Elena said, finding the best ways, and it has to be systematic. And I think starting with a wiki, that's what I did with my classes, is a good way to begin, Elena, working with a wiki. So uh, let's continue. That's the only video for today, so I hope that's going to be okay. All right, so we're going to be talking about these wikis. All right, we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about Wikia. I don't know if you've heard of any of these. You can write down in the chat box if you've heard of Wikia, WikiEducator, PBWorks, Wikispaces, WetPaint, yes, and Google Sites. Okay, we're going to be talking about six today. There are more Wikis, but these are the ones that we're going to focus on today. Oh, uh, well, Wikia. Yes, well, You'll have a chance to see what Wiki is about. So, Jerry, does that mean that you're familiar with Wiki Educator, PB Works, Wiki Spaces, Wet Paint, and Google Sites? You know Google, Laura. All right, that's great. All right, we're going to try, you're going to try all of these after I talk about them because we're, we have a Wiki, acti a Wiki activity at the end where we're going to be on the same page and you're going to get the feel of what it's like to work collaboratively. All right, so let's go back to cooperative learning. At Carleton College, they use a lot of cooperative learning. It involves structuring the classes around small groups. Now this may be easier to do in the classroom in such a way that each group member's success is dependent on the group success. So this is a kind of competition. It goes back to the grades, grading students, and the system that we have today, which is a traditional system. All right, so we're going to start with Wikia for Wikis. Okay, so are you ready, Wikia? What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to write the URL of Wikia. Okay, see if you can find Wikia and see if you can write it in the chat box. Okay, so go to Wikia, find the link, and write it in the chat box. If you're worried, what you have to do, you don't leave the classroom. What you do is you minimize the link to the class and then you don't have any problems coming back. Yes, Google is big brother. You're right, Allison. Google knows everything about us. In fact, no matter where I am in the world, the minute I look for something, well, first of all, Google sets up 
my uh, ideas, the websites where I've been. Google knows exactly what I'm interested in, the websites I visit. Google has an amazing tracking system, and it's probably the best big brother is watching you in the world. So, Allison, you are truly correct. All right, so I see we've got Wikia, Wikia. Excellent. <laughs> they even found your sister. Well, that's a good thing. Um, there are some good things about it, but it's true that they, oh, it's not a good thing, that they know too much about us. And there's a whole book about it. I'll share the book with you, the name of the book, on uh, how it's making us dumb. That's true, too. All right. Thank you, John Davey. Good to see you. All right. So, um, Wikia looks like this. And what you're going to be doing is you're going to be creating accounts on each one of the six wikis that we're going to be talking about. So, the first one where you're going to create an account is on Wikia. And once you create accounts, you'll have a chance to try it out and then hopefully uh, share with us why you prefer one or maybe two or three over the others. Okay, again, as I said, if you go to the link, and let me get the link for you, for those of you who came late, if you get the link to the PowerPoint presentation, there it is. Okay, you'll be able to click on this particular image on the PowerPoint presentation slide, and then you'll get the link to Wikia, but you got it anyways. All right, the next one is Wiki Educator. I've been using Wiki Educator since uh, 2006 or 7. I was also their first officer, voting officer. I don't know how I got that job. And then I was voted into the committee. It was quite an organization, just like uh, Wikipedia with the same kind of rules. I'm still the administrator of Wiko Educator, um, but I don't have much time for it these days. All right, so this is what it looks like. And if you click on these two images, you'll be able to get the uh, link to Wiki Educator. How are they useful for you in the past seven years? Oh my gosh, Jerry. Um, Wiki Educator was very, very useful uh, because it allows you quick, you know, the word quick really comes to mind when it comes to Wiki Educator. I was able to give courses on Wiki Educator. I was able to have over 200, 300 uh, teachers learning on Wiki Educator with me. So it was a really uh, amazing experience connecting with people that I had no idea I would ever connect with, with countries, underdeveloped countries, that, um, you know, it was really a blessing to learn about so many people. Yes, it was, Jerry. And if you're from India, I know that Wiki Educator is very popular in India. Today, it's uh, involved in open education resources, and there's a university now that they're trying to... Um, establish with other universities from around the world where universities share did you lose sound uh, universities share content for free so you can actually learn through wiki educator but it's not there yet it's been it's been a while but the experience you're right jerry what's important is the experience and um, the experience of learning through others meeting others and learning together with other people is very rewarding. So you'll be creating an account on Wiki Educator. Oh, you do. Well, you know, the Wikis, one of uh, Martin Dogiamas, the uh, founder of Moodle, also mentioned this, that the Wiki on Moodle is not, doesn't behave like a real Wiki. Okay, it's not the same thing. Okay, I also have, of course, wikis on the Moodles that I use, but it's not. They may improve it. Right now, it's pretty archaic. Okay, the next one is PB Works Wiki, which um, you may find interesting. 
Okay, let's see if you can find the link to that. If you go to the PowerPoint presentation and click on the following images, either or, you will get the link to it. So, Allison, you loved it. A lot of people love it. I, I would say that most people love PB Works. I remember what it was called something else. Um, peanuts, peanut butter. I think that's what they call it, peanut butter. And uh, that was a long time ago. Yes, exactly, Dangela, because Wiki on the Moodle is not really uh, the right one. Thank you. Thank you, Helena. Yes, that's the link to uh, PB Works. Of course, it's not completely free. Wiki Educator is free, Wikia is free. Uh, PB Works can be free, but they also charge money. If you want extra things. The next one that you're going to create an account on is called Wikispaces, which is very, very popular uh, in the United States for classes. Uh, Wikispaces is amazing. It's for classes. A lot of... Uh, thank you, Jin Lee. Yes, it's used with classes. It's uh, password protected and uh, students enjoy it. I used it for a number of years. I think I joined in 2005. Okay, that was a long time ago. Um, and I used it quite extensively. I have not been using it for the past, uh, I would say, how many years? For the past seven years, I don't think I've used it very much. So I used it for a couple of years. I still have my account there. Thank you, Helena, for adding the link. And you're going to be creating an account here too if you don't have one. But even if you have an account, you're going to create a class, like a class. Could be a class, a project uh, for Wiki Spaces and PB Works. Now, this is what the Wiki Spaces looks like. You can go in as a teacher or as a student. I suggest you go in as a teacher. I believe they charge you now one dollar, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's one dollar. Uh, correct me, it could be ten dollars, but I think it's really something like a dollar if you want to have a free educator account. And the reason they do this is because it's a lot of work to get people approved. And so they need manpower, so they decided to charge people, I think, a dollar. Well, first of all, you sign in. Okay, you choose a username or your email. And then, like any other website, if you forget, you can get your password or your username back. It's quite, you didn't pay. No, you don't have to pay. But now they're asking, I think, Lisa, they're asking. I know I have an educator account. I think that they asked for something. Uh, I'm not sure if it's a dollar, something very small. But still, the idea of asking for money uh, didn't fit right um, for my needs. All right, next one is Google. Okay, Google Wiki Project. Now, this is where Google doesn't go in. It only goes into your search engine. So if anybody talks about Big Brother is watching you, it's only when you search for information. That's the only time they really catch you. So if you don't want to use Google search engine, you won't have any problems. All right, so this is an example of Project Wiki, where you can, this is a template of a wiki, and all you need to do is on the template and the link again. Can you get someone get the link? It's there on the slide. If you click on the image, you should be able to get it. It's a template where, for example, instead of this image, you can replace it with your own image. So it's very easy to create a wiki project using Google. Okay, you simply change the template by adding your information and your images. Thank you, Jin Lee. That's right. That's it. It's actually part of Google Sites or Sites Google. 
as it's called. Next is what's called Google Wiki. And this is where you have a chance to learn about the different applications and add information like you would on Wikipedia. How many of you, by the way, have added information to Wikipedia? Anybody can add information to Wikipedia. All you need is a user, and then you add the information. If it's good information, they check up on you. Then they keep it. If the information is wrong, or if they don't like the information, they delete it. All right. So um, this is a Google Wiki, like Wikipedia, where you can add to the page. And again, if you check on the slides, you'll be able to get the link to this. So far, there are 361 pages on this wiki. So you can create your page. Now notice there are two things here. One is a wiki site and two is a wiki page and they're not the same. A wiki site is where you have a chance to create your own website that's not a blog, it's a wiki, which means that other people can join and add information. On a blog, you're the only one that can add information. People can add comments, or you can make them an author, but they can't edit your words or add to your information on the same page. In a wiki, if someone is a member of the wiki and you give them permission, they will be able to edit your words and add things, okay? So this is an example where you can create your own page, okay, and add information to Google. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jin Lee. So you can try this out just for practice. Okay, next is the Google Sites. And here you can add a wiki or a website, which is exactly the same. And the way you do it is how many of you have a Google, a Gmail account. Okay, give me a thumbs up if you've got a Gmail account because you need to have a Gmail account or an organization Google account. Okay, so we've got Elena, Stella, Dangela. I see most people. What about the rest of you? Do you have a Gmail? You might want to get a Gmail account. I have many accounts, many email accounts, but all my email accounts I aggregate on my Gmail account. So everything comes to one place. Otherwise, it would be a mess. Okay, if you have, okay, Allison, if you have a Google Drive and so on, that means you also have a Gmail account. And I'll show you in a minute what it looks like. All right, so what you do in your account is you go into, and let me share this with you to make it easier. Okay, I'll show you where it is. Oh, you don't use it for Gmails. Okay, you don't have to, but you still have an account. Or maybe it's an organization account, Allison, I'm not sure. But let me just, uh, if you see me frozen, it's because I'm trying to screen share. And what happens is everything kind of freezes. I'll be right back. Okay. So I'm allowing my system, I'm on a Mac, uh, to use a screen share. So let me take you to, um, you'll be able to see this in a minute. I'm going to take you to my Gmail. Okay, just to show you what it looks like so that you can see it. All right, so if I go into my account, okay, here's my name, there's my account, and I go into my email. Okay, there it is. Okay, that's my account. Okay, if you have Google Plus, you don't need to have your Gmail. So what you do is you go to the top right, you click on this, and you'll be able to see G Plus search if you want to search here. Okay, I don't want to search. Uh, let's see. Okay, you also get Play, Google Play, Maps, if you have a Gmail account and your Google Drive. If you go, and of course you have more here, other things as well. 
even more. Well, we don't want more here. Okay, so let's go back here. Okay, what I want to do is I want to go into my drive. Okay, and this is where you can create your Google Drive. In the same way, you can create the site. Okay, so let's go back here. I'm going to stop screen sharing. And this is where you create. All right, so uh, let me just uh, get this here. I told you I wasn't going to show your names. So let me just uh, make sure that your names do not appear. All right, there we go. Okay, so that's exactly what you have here at the top left. Okay, Google, and then you have your sites, number one. If you want to create a new site, you go to create. Okay, that's number two. Number three, you write the name of your site, your wiki site. Notice it's not a page. It's going to have a lot of pages. It's a site. And number four is the address or the link of your wiki or site. Okay, so wiki could be a website or it could be a page on someone else's wiki, like Wiki Educator or Wikipedia. Okay, those are websites and you can add pages, but you cannot add a website to Wiki Educator. Wet Paint, you can. On Wet Paint, create a website. And that's why I call it Wet Paint Site. All right, so let's take a look at that. Okay, there it is. And I've created something for us so we can work on it together. There's the link. And if you go again into the slides, you'll be able to get the link. Okay, can someone add the link? Thank you, Stella. Very good, excellent. But you're going to be doing this, Stella. Instead of going to someone else and having, that's your homework for the week. Your assignment is to do this, and I'll get to it uh, near the end. Okay, we're going to get to that because you're going to to work on the matrix. It's so much better when you do it. I'm sure you'll be able to do a much better job and you'll learn more when you do it than when somebody else does it. Okay, so um, there's the link to wet paint. On wet paint, you can sign up and create a wiki web site. Okay, so that's what you're going to be doing creating a wiki website. All right, so there it is. Okay, let me add it for you to the box. Okay, I'm going to go into the next, uh, I think it's slide number, I'll tell you. It's slide number 22. Okay, slide number 22. If you click on the image, you get this. And that's what you're going to be doing. Okay, here it is. You're going to go into my wiki. My wiki sounds funny. And we're going to be working on it collaboratively. Okay, so there's the wiki. This is wet paint that I created. But you're also going to create a wiki website and it's all of course free the presentation is not available for viewing what presentation it's public do you mean um, uh, it's completely public I'm not sure why you can even download it okay I make all my work open to everybody I don't make it private okay so there I've added the link to the chat box okay Thank you. Oh, you've got one, Stella. That's wonderful. So we can go into yours. We'll talk about people letting others go into theirs. Okay, we'll talk about the attitude of collaboration uh, this month. Okay, so there it is. What I want you to do is I want you to join me and start messing around. Okay, because I don't mind. That's great, Jerry. You're going to have a lot of work by next week. All right. So let's collaborate the wiki way. This came out here on Google Drive. Okay. And that's what we're going to do 
right now. I showed you a little bit before how to get to Google Drive. I created, and there are two ways of creating a Google Drive document. You can either upload it from your computer, whether it's a PowerPoint presentation, a Word document, or you can create one directly on the Google. Okay, and then this is how you get the files. And this is a Word document. And this is exactly what I did. Okay, so if you go into this slide here, into this image, you'll be able to get the collaborative work that we're going to be doing together this week. Okay, let me share the link with you. Okay, there's the link in case you're not getting the PowerPoint presentation. Okay, there it is. There's the link. If you click on it, it should take you somewhere else. Okay, so let's go to that somewhere else. I'm going to screen share again. Okay, let's go to that somewhere else. Here we are. And I see you're here. Okay, now look, uh, you've got all these uh, anonymous looking avatars, but you don't have to look like an avatar. In fact, you can look like yourself. If you have a Google account, every time you go into this, you'll be able to see yourself. Okay, so the assignment, if you don't know how to work with a table, please go over the video. Okay, this is a YouTube video that I created for another uh, conference, actually for a MOOC, on how to add other rows and, well, just rows to um, the table. All right, so this is a question and answer. Use this Google Drive doc to ask questions. So here you write the question and then either I will answer or somebody else will answer, but don't answer yourself. Okay, you're asking a question and hopefully someone will answer it. Okay, I see that someone's starting to write something there. That's one part. The other part, and of course, if you too many people write and you need another um, row, you can add a row. In addition, this is the part of the matrix that um, I was talking about. Here you create a wiki and you fill in the following chart with the information about the wiki. So here you write the name of the wiki. Okay, so this is name of the wiki. Okay, for example, wet paint and the name of your wiki. Or wiki spaces and the name of your wiki. And then you add the link a description of the wiki and how you will use it. Okay, so you don't have to do anything. All you have to do is create an account on each of the wikis, each of the six wikis that we talked about, add the link, description, and you might change this later on. Okay, so don't feel that you have whatever information you add here has to stay. All right, so that's what you're going to be doing. And this is a collaborative learning project. It's not cooperative, okay? Which means that we don't have to put a puzzle together. It's just learning together. All right, so uh, let's see if anybody's added anything. Any questions? Yes. How are you doing? Fine. Not that kind of question. Questions pertaining to, uh, to ask questions. Okay, so I wasn't very clear. Uh, so let me make it clear. Questions about wikis. Okay, questions about wikis. But that's okay. That was a good question. You followed. Uh, okay, so uh, there we go. Okay, I had to uh, change the instructions because they were not clear. Okay, and this is a good way to learn. Let's go back now. Okay, so I'm going to stop my video. It says it's not going too well here. And there we are. So if you have any questions, don't ask them in the chat. Ask them in the Google Drive doc. Okay, so uh, let's see where you'll find all this information. I'm going to share the uh, link to the course 
okay, so that you join if you haven't already joined, because all this information is actually, the PowerPoint presentation is also there. All the information is in the course called Learn to Blend and Flip with Technology. Okay, this is the course, Learn to Blend and Flip with Technology, and I added the link to the chat box. Okay, and the PowerPoint presentation is in the course. I did not get to you, Doc. Okay, so let's, uh, let me add that again. You're talking about the the Google Drive. Okay, so let's get the Google Drive again. Okay, here's the Google Drive doc. Okay, here it is. Let me add it to the chat for you, Jin Lee. There we go. Okay, so I'd like to thank you um, for joining us. If there's a burning question not connected to wikis but to anything else, please let me know in the chat now. And um, any other questions, add to the Google Drive doc. All right, you lost the chat. Okay, Allison, if you lost the chat, the chat is at the bottom left-hand corner, the uh, arrow. Click on the, oh, hello, Tom. Were you here all the time? I thought, I. oh, I'm so glad you came. Wonderful, good to see you online. And I'm looking forward to also hearing you online. Yes, there's a lot of information, Laurie, but you have the PowerPoint presentation. You're going to have the recording and the link to the recording. Let me get the link to the recording for you so that you can also follow the link to the recording. Okay, it's the same link that brought you here and the link is available in the course. So let me take you to the course. I think we've got a few minutes. I extended the class. Let me screen share and take you to the course. You may also want to copy the chat. Okay, so let me take you to the course. Okay, this is the course. As you can see, there's a course feed where you can ask questions. Okay, so the class is still live. So you can ask questions. Please ask your questions here. Okay, let's see what link I have here. Um, on the live class. Okay, if you have any questions about the live class, you can ask them there. Okay, there we are. It's taking time. And then you have... Um, The courseware, okay, let me keep this. The courseware, okay, in the courseware, you have tutorials, which are the PowerPoint presentations. And if you scroll down, there's quite a bit of scrolling, sorry about that. If you scroll down, you will find today's PowerPoint. There it is, okay, with uh, 26 pages or slides, sorry. It says pages, but it should be slides. And then, whoa, that was fast. And then you also have classes. So there are tutorials. And you, if you click on tutorials, you get the list of the tutorials. If you click on classes, you can view the recordings of the classes. If the dates are 2013, we started this in the fall. This is today's, wait, today's class is May 10, Collaborative Learning with Wikis. And then you have next week's class and so on. In addition, there are assignments, eight assignments, okay, that you can do at your own leisure. All right, so let me go back to class. Here's the link to the course. Let me add to the course feed. Let's see if it's any faster. I'll just add it in here, post it. Oh, it's here. There it is. Okay, it's here. I didn't realize. Okay, so there is a place for the questions under the course feed. So let's go back to class, stop screen sharing, and there you are. Okay, so thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone. And um, 
I'm looking forward to seeing your matrix of uh, the wikis. So join each and every one of the six wikis and we'll continue talking about wikis throughout May. So have a wonderful rest of the weekend. Bye for now. Uh, Jerry, it's not about the information. It's about the experience. Try to enjoy the experience. We'll be talking about attitudes to learning and to collaborative learning and to learning together and what it means to experience learning versus what it means to hoard information. We don't want to collect information. The information is online. We want to enjoy the process. Okay, Jerry, so take a deep breath and enjoy. <laughs> All right, so thank you. Bye-bye.